So let's look at part two. We're gonna, we'll start on this part two here. This is going to take us from the cellular level up into the tissue level. <clears throat> so we've already mentioned that the cells are producing bone in layers. Osteoblasts are laying down layers of bone, being trapped within those layers, becoming osteocytes. And you're going to see that the layers are structured into two distinct types of bone. This is where I had you ignore this when we were doing our introductory unit. This is where we're going to learn about compact bone and cancellous bone. You're going to see that there's an organization of both types in order to create what we would call a bone. And this picture right here helps us visualize than these two types of bone. Compact bone is dense bone. This is bone where the layers are very densely put together so that you wind up with a thick, tough layer of bone. Layers are all very, very tightly put together. Cancellous bone here you can see is fairly porous. Some people actually call cancellous bone spongy bone. You've got to be careful with that so you don't think it's soft like a sponge is. Think of like a, if you've got a sponge, if the sponge gets really dry, it's kind of hard and crusty maybe. Uh, the idea here is not that it's soft or squishy. It's the idea that there's lots of holes in it. There's lots of spaces in it. Uh, one of the patterns that we're going to see in the formation of the skeleton is that the cancellous bone is typically internal and the compact bone is external. This is why when you look at any bone in the human body, it looks very, very hard and solid from the outside because all of the external surfaces are compact. What most of us never see is that the inside structure of the bone is very porous. And we've mentioned that. We mentioned something about that before. It's porous here so that there's room for the blood-producing tissues. The hemopoietic <coughs> tissues of the human body are in and through all of these little spaces. This, the tissue we call red bone marrow is throughout these areas here. And this is more of what we just said. What, what we want to do now is let's take a little bit of the cancellous bone and let's pull it out, okay, and let's look at it in a little more detail. And you have a picture like this again. You can find all of these pictures in your textbook. But here's where we've taken a little bit of the cancellous bone out. And when we look at it up close, it's branch-like. If, if you think of the picture in the first lecture that showed osteoporosis. You saw those little sticks of bone. This is what the cancellous bone is like. Got all these little like stick-like pieces, little girders, little framing elements. And in cancellous bone, these little stick-like pieces are called trabeculae. That's plural. Trabecula would be singular. In Latin, if you have a word that ends in A like this, if you want to pluralize it, you don't put an S on it. You put an E. And then if it's singular, you say trabecula. And if you have the E on the end, you say AE. So you, there's more of an E sound, trabeculae. Now, one of the things you're going to see here, too, is that these, although when you look at these, they may look very haphazard, looks like they're just kind of going every which way, each and every one of these sticks is formed between the osteoblast and the osteoclast so that it's somewhere where it's supporting something. 
If one of these little branches did not have any stress on it, was not supporting anything, the osteoclast would come along and take it away. It's long, and so there's sort of a sculpting, sort of a, you know, a sculptor takes a block of marble and takes some of the marble away in order to leave the form of something in it, in order to leave this statue that he's sculpting. That's really what's going on here. The taking away process is as important as the forming process. Here's a cross section through the thigh bone. This is up near where it goes into your hip. And if you look closely, you can see, this is an actual picture, you can see many of the little trabecula tend to fall across certain lines. I see lots of them running this way. Over here, I see a lot of vertical ones. I see them kind of curving over that way. <clears throat> All of these were structured along the stress lines of the bone where the stress or weight of the body puts most stress, you find the trabecula all, all being sculpted to carry the weights and the stresses that are put on the bone itself. So you can literally see this in the structure of the bone. Now, what do these little trabecula look like? Well, if you take one of the little trabecula and you cut across it to see what it looks like, this is what it looks like. You saw this picture in the first lecture. You saw the parallel layers of bone here, or what I should say probably is concentric layers of bone, right, forming. This is a cross section through one of these little sticks. So, Cancellous bone is formed in layers, isn't it? But the layers are used to form the little girders or the little sticks. If I want this one to be stronger, I start doing something active with my body and a lot of stress comes onto this little trabecula here. What's going to happen right here? Osteoblasts are going to put another layer and make this a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger to carry the extra stress there. Or maybe some would come along and put another little trabecula right parallel to that to give a little bit more strength going that way. But more bone is going to get built when there's more stress for it. So you never want to think that this is kind of a haphazard sort of thing. This is really a very, very specific. The cells in your human body are responding to activities to the stresses and strains in your bone to either make more or to take some away. Now, if you look at compact bone, this is densely packed layers. It's very little space. And this is the picture that shows you what some compact bone looks like. I don't see, I see many, many, many layers of bone here, and I don't see any little spaces in here. The only thing you could call a space would be tubes where blood vessels are running through all these layers. And in fact, when compact bone is produced, the basic way it's produced is that the blood vessels first grow into the area that the bone is going to be, and the blood vessels then become the orientation sites for the osteoblasts. You'll have blood vessels here, and then osteoblasts will come around, and they'll hold hands and do ring around the rosy, right, around the blood vessel, and then they'll put a layer of bone down surrounding the blood vessel, so now there's a tunnel. And then another group of osteoblasts will come along and put another layer of bone, and layer by layer... They layer bone around each one of the blood vessels. And look at any of the blood vessels here, and you'll see rings of layers around the blood vessels. The blood vessel comes to be in a little tube that we call the central canal. And it's the central canal of a ring of layers that is called an osteon. Now, if you studied any human anatomy 15, 20 years ago, you probably knew that as a haversian system, and this was a Haversian canal, today we're calling these circular structures of bone that get produced that give the main strength to this compact bone. We call these osteons. 
and the tunnel with the blood vessel in it is called the central canal of the osteon. In order to make dense bone here, though, there's three kinds of layering that goes on. Basically, in the cancellous bone, there's just that one layering process. Here, there's sort of a triple layering process. I have the layers that are inside the osteon themselves. We call those layers concentric, meaning the layers are all, all have a, the same center point. In uh, geometry, maybe you've looked at concentric circles. Every circle has a center, right? That where you'd measure the radius from. Every circle has a center. If you have more than one circle with the same exact center point, they're all inside and outside of each other. We say they're concentric. And that's what these are. All the layers that are in the osteon are concentric. But if you produce a bunch of osteons, right, if I put a bunch of circles together, if I'm looking down on the top of this, if I produce a bunch of circles, there's some gaps, aren't there? Right? There's going to be some spaces here between the osteons. Each of these osteons has a central canal and it has layers in it. But when I make a bunch of these layers right here, I'm still going to have these gaps. So what happens is osteoblasts come along and they fill in these gaps with more layers. And those layers, because they're in between the osteons, are going to be called interstitial layers. The word lamella is just a Latin word that means layers. So I have concentric lamellae. I have interstitial lamellae. Now that makes all of this area very, very dense. But then it goes one more and puts some layers over the outside surface of the bone, some parallel layers that are not in the osteons, not between the osteons, but just are on the outer surface of the bone, and those are called circumferential layers or circumferential lamellae. Right, if, this, if, this was, if these were all produced down inside the bone to make the bone strong, but here's the surface of the bone, it's not going to be like that what it's going to do is put some layers to get a nice smooth surface out here. So these outer surface layers are the ones we call circumferential. So like for example right here, this is over here is the outside surface of the bone and you can see some long layers, not little circular ones, not little in between ones, but big broad flat layers covering the outside surface of the bone. Those are circumferential. And this is basically when you have a nice thick bit of compact bone. In many places you just have a little compact bone. If you've got mostly cancellous bone with just a veneer, that veneer will just be those circumferential layers perhaps. Okay. So, Compact bone. Any questions about compact bone? Are we okay here so far? Okay. Concentric lamellae. Osteons. The gaps get interstitial lamellae built into them. I'm just putting a one here that just kind of summarizes what I just told you there. The outer surface is the circumferential lamellae. <clears throat> In a picture like this, this happens to be one of the pictures that sometimes shows up on the written test. You want to make sure you've looked at it several times before you take the test. You don't have to know every single thing on this picture. Basically, <clears throat> you should be able to identify the osteon should be able to identify the three types of layering, right? And you should be able to la label the two types of tubes here. I'm not, they name the blood vessels here. I'm not interested in the blood vessels, but notice that the vertical blood vessels here are in what we call central canals. But every so often there are blood vessels that cross horizontally through to connect to. These are called perforating canals. 
used to be called Volkmann's canals. These are known as perforating. So you should be able to identify the central canals and the perforating canals of the compact bone. Okay, and we'll, we'll leave it right there. We're, we're going to go beyond this next time. If you're in your handout here,